Welcome to the channel. My name is Kurt and in today's video I'm going to try to help you size your electrical system in your van or in your RV. Now before we start I want to go over a couple things. I'm a master electrician. I'm actually licensed in two states and also we have been living full time in our ProMaster van and our van is fully electric. We don't use any propane the only exception is our heat. So we have an S-bar heater which is tied into our gas tank in the van. Alright, now I got my cheat sheet. So let's go over what we use in the van. So what items we, we have in the van that need power. Um, we have a 75 liter Dometic fridge. We have a single burner induction. We have an Instapot. We have a water heater, which is an ISO temp 5.3 gallon. We have a water pump. We got lights. We got a computer. We got a couple iPads. We got a couple cameras. Uh, we got a couple phones. We got a couple battery packs and Max Air Fan. Um, composting toilet has a little fan on it so we got quite a bit that consumes power in the van so let's now talk about what we use to power those items so our system we have three 100 amp hour battle -borne batteries so these are lithium batteries we have 300 amp hours and how we charge them is through two means one of them is solar we have 525 watts of solar and the second mean is through our dc to dc charger so while we're driving it's charging the batteries now how we convert the 12 volts to 120 is we use a victron multi plus 3000 uh, which we love the thing's been really flawless it's it's very efficient uh unit I think the best way to start sizing your system is by figuring out what you're going to have in your rig, right? So what are you going to have camera gear, computers, uh, what size fridge, um, induction, if you're going to use propane, however your configuration is, you need to start by figuring out the best you can is what you're going to use every day as far as wattage okay so for example if you have a thousand watt induction cooktop and let's say you just run that 15 minutes a day okay so the thousand watts is if you use that thing for an entire hour so if you use it for 15 minutes then that's a quarter right so you're using 250 watts so for another example our 75 liter Dometic fridge we calculated about 50 watts of use and then what we did like on a fridge that's cutting on and off on and off all day long 24 hours is is we took the 50 watts times that by 12 so we cut the day in half and said okay well it's going to be on and it's going to be using 50 watts so the closer you can get to sizing everything out getting the wattage of everything is going to help you size your whole electrical system out start totaling these things up um, get on your devices like your computer see what it consumes you're gonna have to do some research because this is the hardest part the better you can figure out how much you're consuming then that dictates on how much solar and how many batteries you need Okay, and this is why we're talking about this because I've watched plenty of videos and it's and no one really talks about sizing your system. You know, it just kind of like, well, you just kind of do this and kind of do that, but but why and how do I get to that point? Okay. So that's the first thing I would do. The second thing that I would do is you've you've got to look into where where are you going to be most of the time? Are you going to be chasing good weather? Are you one of those people that say, hey, I really want to rely on solar. I'm going to go to BLM land 
and I'm gonna spend my full 14 days there and then move. You know, if you can last that long without water and getting groceries and other supplies. So you need to kind of figure out if you're chasing the weather, if you're staying long periods of time in one place and not moving, because the more you move, then if you get a DC to DC charger, you can charge your system while you're driving. When you go to the grocery store or go down and get water or go to a new spot or go to a hiking spot. So if you're more active, then you may not need as much solar. But if you can, like I said, figure out where you're going to be in whatever country you're in. Is it rainy? Is it cloudy a lot? You know, maybe solar is not a viable option. You know, maybe you need a generator. Maybe you need to rely more on a DC to DC setup or have maybe no solar and, you know, like some of your um, Winnebago's and stuff, they have a, another alternator that's on a system and your vehicle just automatically starts up and it charges the batteries back up and have no solar. I've seen rigs like that. So, you know, if you want to be skiing in the mountains, maybe the Northwest, so where it's cloudy a lot, um, that may be a viable option. So you, you really got to dig into where you're going to be, what time of the year you're going to be there. So adding up what you're consuming and then figuring out where you're going to be, where you're living or traveling or what you're doing. And you may be part time too, or you may be going to a campground and you can just plug it in. We never plugged up to shore power. All right, now let's really dive into the solar aspect of it. Uh, what I recommend is you need a minimum of two times your consumption for the day. If you have a 100 watt panel, if you Google this, how much power am I gonna get out of that 100 watt panel for the day? So it's gonna tell you, well, just times that by four, four hours out of the day, out of the 24 on average. Now what we've seen as low as two hours a day getting that full wattage. So basically we'd only get 200 watts for the entire day or as much as seven hours. So 700 watts for the entire day on that 100 watt panel. So you have this huge swing in solar. So we got 525 on the van. So 525 times four is 2100 watts. Okay, and we consume about a thousand watts a day. So that's twice as much based on that four hour window. Okay, so if we're only getting two hours a day, then that drops us down to what? 1,050. So we're just barely scraping by. So in the winter time, that's where we're at. Um, it would be nice to have one more panel. So once you start doing this math, the, the solar will really start to make sense. And, you know, maybe another option is you only, like for example, we just keep the 525 up here, but we add some panels that we can lay on the ground or put out here on the ground and aim towards the sun. And we just use those for, you know, two or three months in the winter while you're kind of chilling out in the, the winter. Um, and that's kind of what we do. We kind of hang out in the winter time because we're chasing the good weather, you kind of get bottled necked or you're, you're only able to kind of explore certain areas. So take that into account too. Like I said, I'm just trying to get your brain uh, going, just trying to bring ideas that maybe you haven't thought of. So now onto the battery part. Okay, so you, you kind of figuring out your solar, you're figuring out if you want to have a DC to DC charger, let's get on to the battery part. So what we come up with, what we've come up with is that basically you want um, three times whatever your wattage is. Okay, so for an example, one 100 amp hour lithium battery is 1200 watts. So when you start putting this in watts, this makes a lot more sense than doing the amps and the watts. So try to convert everything into watts, that will definitely help you, okay? So say we're using a thousand watts a day. So kind of minimum would be three batteries. So if we didn't get any solar, we didn't move or whatever, 
you could almost last three days. Even on a cloudy day, you're going to get some. But, you know, start to think of that. How many days do you want to be out without having to move, without having, you know, maybe you want to use a generator too. That's the problem with this. There's tons of variables and I'm just trying to get, like I said, trying to get your brain going on thinking outside the box and, and what fits you. So it's kind of a general rule of thumb. I say you need at least three times what your usage is. And so that ties back in with, say you're using solar and you got two times. Well, then you start to start doing calculations. Well, for example, if I get full sun today, okay, and I get my four hours and I got a thousand watts worth of solar. So that gives me let's 4,000 watts of solar based on the four hour rule. Could be less, could be more. And I'm using a thousand of that. So that gives me 3,000 to put into my batteries. Now, like I said, that's overkill. But you see, when you start doing the math like that, you'll start to figure out, well, oh, well, I don't need a thousand watts of solar. Um, maybe, maybe I, I want to be up in the mountains and I want to ski and stuff like that. So maybe you do need a thousand because you may only get an hour of that. You only may get a thousand watts in a day or 1500. But then in the summertime, I mean, you're going to have plenty of power. So maybe it's one of those things where you have 500 on top of your van and you have some panels that you can pull out of your your rig and you can put them on the ground when you need extra power. So there's some things to think about. All right, now the last thing I wanna talk about is setting yourself up for success to expand your system. Most people build their electrical system out on budget. But if, if you didn't have to worry about a budget, by doing all those calculations, you know, do your minimum and kind of do your, like your best case scenario and your worst case scenario. And if you can kind of go somewhere in between or kind of trend towards the best case scenario, then you can always add to the system later. For example, in our van, we have three batteries. I have room to add another battery. On top, I could add another panel. I pulled an extra wire up on the top because all the walls are finished and I, it's not easy access up to the top. So you may want to pull an extra wire so you can expand or hey, if, if the wire up there that you have is bad or damaged or whatever, you have, you have a spare wire then tearing your, your rig apart. With the solar, I highly recommend when you build your original solar panel system to get an MPPT solar charge controller that's sized just for that system that you built. Because a lot of people don't realize, say you have rich solar panels, okay? So you got a 100 watt, so you got three or four of them, doesn't matter, okay? And then you wanna go and get some briefcase style or you wanna get an additional uh, maybe panel that lays out on the ground. Well, you got to be careful because if you add that later, you may not find a panel that meets the voltage of the rich solar. On the van here, as I talked about, we had we have one 325 watt Panasonic panel, and we have two rich solars, so they're different voltages. You can't put all three of those panels on one solar charge controller because the voltages are different. So we have the Panasonic going through one unit um, solar charge controller, and we have the two rich solars going through another one. So that kind of makes sense, right? If you're, if you're designing your solar panels, go ahead and get a, get a solar charge controller just for that. So if you expand down the road, if that panel, they don't make that panel, or they change the voltage, or you can't find something comparable, um, to the panels that you have, then you're you're kind of SOL if you bought a bigger um, solar charge controller, right? So it's kind of a waste of money. It'd be better to leave a, a spot, run an extra wire, 
So if you expand, if you add one on top or if you want to lay one outside or, you know, mobile panel, then you can size your new MPPT to that new solar array that you're setting up. And I think that'll work out a lot better. Um, so one more thing I actually wanted to mention about like the, the panels is get top of the line panels is what I recommend because you're limited to space on top of your rig. So why not get as much power as you can out of a premium panel than cheating yourself and not getting the, the full benefits of the square footage that you have, right? So if you go into, for example, if you go into a supply house and you're gonna buy panels, these guys are gonna talk you into being, oh, well you need to kind of do the watt to dollar amount ratio. What's your best bang for the buck for the panel? Well, yeah, man, that's okay if I'm on five acres or I have a house with, you know, I have plenty of space up on the roof and I'm not worried about that. But when you have rigs like ours, where you're very limited to space, um, I think you need to get the best panel you can. And just a little helpful advice, Panasonic is the way to go. This is a HIT panel. And now they've changed names. I forget the new series of panel. Easy to look up. Just get you, get you a Panasonic panel. You won't go wrong with it. Um, and just look at the chart. I mean, the chart's amazing how much power this thing will put out after 25 years. There's places to skip money on, but I don't think it is with the panels when you're limited to space. You know, I think most people can probably get away with, you know, 300 amp hours to 500 amp hours. Um, another thing to think about is go 24 volt. On our next system, we're going to go 24 volt, um, which things are more efficient. You have more products available, right? So when you get 24 and 48 volt, then you kind of get in the residential, the kind of the tiny home off grid stuff. And that's where all the technology is. So guys, I hope this helps. Um, try not to ramble too much. I love to hear from you in the comments. So I'm doing this video. I really want to open discussion. I want your input. If you're out there running solar, running a generator, running a DC to DC, what are you finding um, out? Um, am I missing anything? Um, did I explain this well to you guys? I'd like to help people out and because I know it's tough trying to find some of this information. So hopefully this helps, guys. Um, if you made it this far, you're freaking awesome, man. Please like the video. Please subscribe. And we'll see you on the next one.